each piece is a window into the history and a window into the lives of these air crew and ground crew guys, and there's a story that goes with each one. The Bomber Command Museum has an impressive database of nose art images and replica paintings from World War II. It gives them identity. If I give you a number of a ship, you have no idea, it means nothing. But if I say Titanic, everyone in the world knows what I'm speaking about. And that's the simple power of what nose art was. It gave an identity to a pilot or a crew and a particular aircraft and they depended on that aircraft for their life. World War II is when the art form really picked up a name. Early in the war, the Battle of Britain, the Royal Air Force were receiving young men from all over the world, and they started to paint their nationality. First official order appeared during the start of the Battle of Britain, and they allowed all these pilots to paint in what they called pilot position. After the Battle of Britain, the artwork, which was okay to the pilot position, gradually moved to the front. And by the beginning of 1941, it took the name nose art for the simple reason it was the one position of the aircraft you could paint an art form without interfering with a markings, identification, serial number, The number one subject in the Second World War became the pinup girl. The average age of the bomber crews were 22 and they were mostly single and away from home and so ladies were on their minds I suppose. Quite a variety of subjects for the nose art. This one very unique I guess in that it has a direct connection to Hamilton and the Hamilton Tiger Cats football team. A lot of uh, cartoon characters. Uh, Walt Disney type characters. Uh, the Medicine Hat one that we referred to had Goofy on it. Walt Disney started creating free of charge. He had five artists that did nothing through the war but create insignia. I believe that Walt Disney had the greatest impact with his artwork and the cartoon characters because these young men that went to war had been brought up with Walt Disney. One of the most famous movies is Dumbo. It had a huge effect on these young men because Dumbo was a success story. That affected morale. Dumbo ranked in insignia, surprised even the artist. He came number six. 70 to 75% of the men who had artistic talent and painted were ground crew. They were not trained artists, they had just natural talent. This fellow, uh, Matthew Ferguson, who painted the, the Elcat here, uh, he was obviously had some real talent. Some of the other nose art is, is you know, less sophisticated artistically than this. In 1943, there were so many Canadians being killed they lowered the enlistment rate to the age of 17. So you have young men leaving high school and leaving university at 17 years of age to go and fight. And a year later, they're in combat and they're 18 years of age. It gave them a, a sense of security as, you know, this is our airplane and it's gonna bring us home. And it was uh, just a way of them connecting to the airplane and a source of some security for them. <laughs>